Hi, I'm Steve McCarroll. And I'm Evan McCosco, a postdoctoral fellow in Steve's lab. And I'm Oni Basu, a postdoc with Aviv Regev and the KCU at Broad, and with David White at Harvard Seas. Three years ago, we started working on a new genomics technology to make single-cell gene expression profiling fast and straightforward. Complex tissues, like the brain, contain many different populations of functionally specialized cells. These cells use the same genome in different ways. There is so much to learn about the ways in which specific cell types assume unique cell shapes, accomplish feats of physiology, and respond to mutations and other stimuli. What is the range of cell types out there? We wanted to develop a method to systematically characterize brain cell diversity. If we could get enough gene expression profiles from single cells, we thought we st might start getting answers. When we started this project, gene expression analysis was really good at measuring gene levels in a single homogenized sample. So it's really like a fruit smoothie, which has all the different fruits commingled and homogenized, which is still pretty delicious. But what we really wanted was the fruit salad, where you could taste every fruit one at a time. What this technique does is measure the genome-wide expression cell by cell. We started thinking about trying to make a system that would let us make thousands and thousands of single-cell RNA-seq libraries in parallel, inexpensive, easy experiments. We had been using droplets to study many things in molecular biology, such as the expression and copy number variation of individual genes. Droplets provide a way of scaling molecular reactions so that one can perform hundreds of thousands of them in a tiny microcentrifuge tube. What the microfluidic technology brings to the table is really the scalability. We can do around 10,000 to 20,000 cells at every go, and we can really look at complex systems now, like the brain or the immune system. The challenge with droplets is that they don't stay in one place, and they don't have stable addresses. We needed a way to put a DNA barcode onto the RNA from each cell, and to have that barcode be different than the barcode that was applied to the RNA of each other cell. Evan came up with a cool way of doing this. We use beads to deliver DNA barcodes into droplets. We synthesize the oligos directly on the beads. To make the barcodes, we split the beads at random into groups, add a different DNA base to each group, and then pool the beads again. Repeating this split and pool process 12 times, we produce 16 million different barcoded beads. Oni designed microfluidic devices that could deliver these beads and cells together into droplets. We call this technology DropSeq. But how can we really know if we're making single cell libraries? It could have been we were just making a lot of really tiny smoothies. So we came up with a simple test. Let's put human and mouse cells together in our system. If each bead or cell barcode associates with a mixture of human and mouse transcripts, we've ended up with smoothies. But if each bead has captured transcripts from just one species, then we've preserved the information about individual cells. In the first series of experiments we did, many of the cell barcodes we identified had mixtures of human and mouse transcripts. We continued improving the design of our lysis buffer, we increased the stability of the droplets we made, and adjusted the concentration of cells and beads used in our experiments. Eventually, we were able to achieve very high organism specificity for the great majority of the cell barcodes we sequenced, proving that our libraries came from single cells. So we had DropSeq in hand, and now we could finally do what we wanted to do, which was to use it to, to study complex tissue like the nervous system. We chose to start with the mammalian retina because so much is known about the different cell types that exist in the retina, their functions, and there are molecular markers for many of them. We generated 44,808 single cell profiles for mouse retina. It took four days to do with DropSeq. Rahul Satija developed computational approaches for clustering these 45,000 single cell transcriptional profiles into clusters or groups. We identified 39 transcriptionally distinct populations of cells in the retina. We found cell populations that didn't have markers before. And most reassuringly, we found a lot of types that we did know about. A single scientist can come in and make 10,000 single cell libraries every day. And the reagent costs are small on the order of six and a half cents per cell. There is so much exciting work to do, and we hope that scientists enjoy using DropSeq to do that work.